Hi, and welcome to New God Sunday School. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee, and Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, The Adventures of Adam Star and the Solar Legion. I'm also the author of Witchman, a new superhero comic. There's a Witchman Kickstarter, which you can find out more about by following the link in the show notes below. So now we're four issues into Jack Kirby's uh, Jimmy Olsen tenure. We're at uh, issue number 136. Not even Superman can stop the giant Jimmy. Jimmy Olsen, the DNA alien. Extra, the Newsboy Legion, plus a Golden Age superhero reborn. So it looks like we have another uh, Neil Adams cover showing the jolly green giant, this um, pseudo Hulk, which is uh, sort of a, you know, like a Hulk Jimmy Olsen with the freckles and whatnot, which uh, d detract from the impact of, of what, you know, could have been like a, you know, really cool menacing adversary and just become sort of, you know, more Jimmy Olsen silliness on, on par with, you know, what had been, you know, part of the series for years leading up to this. Deep in a federal underground complex known as The Project, the Newsboy Legion responds to strange and fearful sounds of violence. Begin the saga of the DN aliens. Wow! So this is kind of like uh, filmmaking 101. This is, or storytelling 101. This is something you see a lot in like a Spielberg movie where you see the sort of, you know, wowie kazawi uh, reaction. And then, you know, you see what everybody's reacting to. And, and so then when you see it, you're bringing this sort of wowness with you to the thing you're looking at. And what you're looking at is pretty fucking cool. We've got the Golden Guardian, uh, Jack Kirby and Joe Simon's Captain America uh, that they created for DC. They're, they're sort of Captain America clone. They, they created Captain America over at Timely Marvel. Then they came to DC and created the Golden Guardian as, as sort of another shield slinger for them. At war with, you know, if you hadn't seen that cover, you'd assume maybe he's fighting the Hulk and he's fighting on behalf of Superman who's been, you know, knocked unconscious. That's, that's just how badass this monster is. Kirby dynamism, the fight continues. This is a great little shot here. It kind of feels a little bit like, I don't, I don't know if there's a particular panel, but I, this does make me think of Frank Miller's 300. Having, you know, Jimmy and the Newsboy Legion there is kind of cool too, because then you have this big battle going on and then you have these onlookers kind of beside themselves watching the action. And this uh, green kryptonite coated uh, Hulk just says, kill, kill. It's an amazing Kirby fight. Jimmy runs over to help Superman wake up so he can, he can try to take this guy on. Giant uh, Jimmy Hulk grabs the original Jimmy. You, you are exactly like myself and they're sort of face to face with each other. A nice moment. I mean, as I had said in the previous issue, I would have preferred if this were just, you know, some kind of, you know, mutant cloned Hulk, uh, or maybe even cloned from Superman's tissue, which the evil factory had access to. Making it a Jimmy Olsen clone, it just, it, it kind of drains, you know, some of the excitement and, and cool factor out of it, as far as I'm concerned. You know, now they're facing off. The Guardian no sooner lunges at the giant than Superman slowly begins to exert pressure on the cement floor. The ground, it's tilting. I lost my balance. Now, and uh, Superman snags Jimmy uh, from, from danger. Now this, I haven't seen this done before by anybody else other than Kirby. And, and he employs this trick a couple times, but where Superman applies a steady pressure to the floor to crack it or tilt it or, you know, throw... Uh, his opponent off balance. And I've seen it used since, but I think this is the first instance of it. And Kirby does it again also uh, in a Superman themed commandy issue. But Grant Morrison has picked up on this trick. And so uh, from time to time, he, he has this as part of Superman's bag of tricks in you know comics like All-Star Superman. So yeah, pretty exciting sequence, but how are we gonna defeat this kryptonite coated uh, Hulk that that Superman can't fight directly. He can only sort of fight indirectly. And um, the Guardian rushes into battle, but there's a surprise uh, help from from an unexpected source. And now the something has knocked some some gaseous vapor has knocked the Jimmy Hulk unconscious. 
and he looks like more giant than ever in this panel. As for our fallen Goliath, it would seem the best course to take would be to look for a David. Ah, here he is. Don't tell me he's got armed fleas. It's a rather humorous label to apply to our little friend here, but I would say you're close. A miniature paratrooper, and he's waving a grenade. But where did he come from? How did he get into the giant's hair? And we see a bunch of them parachuting down. Micro paratroopers, and they all look like Scrapper. What are they carrying? Cryonic equipment. They're going to put our giant on ice, Jimmy, and so they, you know, spray this, uh, you know, liquid nitrogen or whatever, this cryonic equipment onto this giant Jimmy. And we've had a DC Hulk. We've had a DC Captain America. Now Jack has sneaked in a DC Silver Surfer drawing. I don't know if he is sort of trolling Marvel and, you know, trolling Stan Lee at this point, trying to get as many of his, you know, Marvel creations into his new DC work. But, uh, you know, more power to him. That's just kind of fun speculation to make. And uh, Scrapper is, you know, in love with these troopers that are that are based on his genetics. Hey, here comes that little gimmicky plane again. It's picking up the little Scrapper troopers. Ain't they cute? So they used me cell tissues to make these spunky fighting men. Well, it's only a natural church. Again, the same thing with making this giant green monster a Jimmy Olsen clone with the freckles. Um, I'm not a big fan of them making, uh, uh, of Jack making, you know, these little mini soldiers into sort of, you know, scrapper, made out of scrapper's DNA. It's just, if you had this giant green monster, a fight with a giant green monster covered with kryptonite, and then you had these like mini soldiers these cloned mini soldiers defeat him. That would be awesome enough. But like, why do they have to be Scrapper? I don't know. It's just like, it's not to my taste. And it, maybe I, I should, you know, get into the spirit of this and, and sort of the humor. And, and Jack does have his humorous side. And, and this is him being sort of whimsical and humorous. But I mean, I sort of like, like, I like the badass stuff. I want, I want badass moments. And so, um, you know, it's probably more, more about me and less about the work itself. I mean, Jack is, uh, you know, Jimmy Olsen, he does employ a lot more humor in this series than he does in the other ones. The, you know, New Gods and Forever People and all that, um, and, and Mr. Miracle, there's like varying levels of humor, but it's it's largely very serious and very dangerous. And I, I really like that tone. And I'm not as much a fa a, of a fan of this kind of stuff. Like, like, like this could be one of the great sort of super cool Jack Kirby comics and it just kind of stops short with, with some of this silliness. Again, your mileage may vary. I mean, you know, some may, maybe to somebody else, this is like, this is the ultimate expression of Jack because it has the sort of badass and the goofiness and the, and the humor and the charm. Um, it's just not, it's not doing it for me. It, it's like so close to being so amazing. And, and it's just, the way that it's so close to being amazing is just like, I find irritating. Speaking of amazing, we get a visit from Darkseid, and, and he's not pleased with what they did. They created this amazing monster and then sent him in without any planning, you know, hoping things would go well. And, and without a plan, e even the most powerful, you know, weapon is sort of useless. You have to use things smartly. And that's an ongoing theme of all of these comics. And that's something that Darkseid knows and, the you know, Orion doesn't know. And Orion has to learn in order to defeat Darkseid. Uh, we get another cool view of the clone factory, and then we see this amazing map. We saw like a smaller map in issue 133. Now we're seeing this really nice map where we see, you can chart the progress of the story. You can chart the progress of Superman and his pal, Jimmy Olsen. We start out in the wild area, and then we make our way to Habitat, and then we drive from Habitat to the Zoom Way, and then from the Zoom Way to the project. Really beautiful, just great stuff. We get a letters column where, like, finally we're getting letters reacting to Jimmy Olsen 133. And everybody's mind is blown except for this guy. Uh, he does not like all this Kirby stuff. And they tell him in the response, E. Nelson Bridgewell tells him in the response that, that uh, this guy Gregory Kent is not... Uh, most of the letters they've been receiving do not share his sentiment. Most of them are raves, and they are blown away by just the fresh energy 
and, and nonstop action, adventure, and and inventiveness and creativity that Jack Kirby is bringing to this moribund series. In the project, the clones and whatnot are given jobs and roles, and yeah, they're put to work, but in... Um, in the evil factory, they're just treated as beasts of burden, an, an extension of Apocalypse. But they have another project they're working on that might be uh, even better than the the Jimmy Olsen monster. And so we have all these eggs. Kind of reminds me of the movie Aliens or Alien. This issue and the previous issue, we get a lot of explanation of DNA and cloning and, and this project and what it's about. And to me, it, it somewhat slows down the action. Like the first two issues were so like rapid fire, one thing after another and amazing. And, and the previous issue in this one are a little bit calmer, a little bit tamer. Um, but again, it's 1970. I think you do kind of have to explain cloning to, to an almost excruciating degree to you know an audience of that era as opposed to now when uh, cloning is, is a reality. And, and they're explaining the origin of this guardian. Wow, the guardian. Where you been all these years? I'll bet our dads know. There was a policeman named Jim Harper known by the old newsboy legion. Did you know him? Know him? I'll bet he is Jim. Come on, fess up. So we're sort of reestablishing the dynamic of the newsboy legion comics from the 40s. You know, one of the, the hits that Simon and Kirby, you know, produced for DC back in the 40s, and we're getting the establishment of, like, they don't know that the Guardian is Jim Harper, but they they suspect. I, I would like to answer all your questions, but I somehow feel so strange. Small wonder that giant had a fist like a slab of concrete. Yeah, he could knock me punchy, too. Here come our dads. They'll help you. And so the dads show up and uh, they talk about him being Model 1, and so the Newsboy Legion is what? Oh, so this is like a phony Guardian? He's every bit as real as the original Guardian. And after watching him on the telemonitor, I'd say he's magnificent. Dad, what are you trying to tell us? What happened to the original? The other men will fill you in. I'm busy. And so they tell the, the, the original Newsboy Legion, they start telling their story. You may as well have it straight, kids. The original Guardian is dead. During the years we grew to manhood, we lost track of him. The Guardian vanished when Jim Harper was transferred to the detective division in another precinct. Not long ago, we were called to Jim Harper's bedside. He'd been fatally wounded in an action with fleeing criminals. Don't tell us the rest. I'll cry. Wait, before he died, Jim Harper confessed he'd been the Guardian, didn't he? Yes, but we just couldn't bear to lose him. When the original Jim Harper passed on, he left behind a still-living cell tissue sample. So the project grew a new guardian. I'm glad that Flippa Dippa and I are part of the kind of friendship you share and mighty proud too. And so they're putting this giant who was once the Hulk and is now the Silver Surfer, they're putting him into a cryonic capsule, you know, putting, putting him in the carbon freeze. Uh, Superman's going to give Jimmy a tour of the project. And there's a bunch of clones of Gabby who operate the communications division. Again, I don't know, it's, 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 that's, that, that stuff's kind of corny to me, but... Here is one of the nurseries, Jimmy, where the young normals are carefully raised and tutored. Did you say normals, Superman? Do you mean... It's getting a little creepy. Like, this is cool. This is kind of like more of that sort of paranoid thriller kind of stuff that they, they're they raising cloned human beings from cell samples and, you know, raising them from childhood to adulthood. I guess in some, maybe some accelerated way because there's teenagers there, unless this project's been going on since the mid 50s and now uh you know I, I guess these are almost like baby boomers they're like born in the 50s uh they're or cloned in the 50s and now they're they're teenagers well the human cell is still a pliable mystery experiments have produced the step-ups but yeah it's a little creepy that they're sort of keeping all these these kids in this sort of paramilitary facility where they're being raised by these nurses who may possibly be clones themselves it's 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 a little weird and 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 you know, it's interesting. It's 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 interesting sci-fi storytelling. Hi, Superman. Don't forget our Friday night sing-in. Bring your friend. Say, these kids look like the Harrys who live in that mountain-sized van that runs on the Zoomway. Thanks. We'll be there. The Harrys came from this group. These are our step-ups. 
They have evolved hair trigger minds and they can come up with mechanical wonders like the Mountain of Judgment. So, you know, the Harry's was kind of like, you know, a, a play on the hippies, I'm guessing. And, and, and the sort of, you know, this sort of long hair and beards that young people were growing at this time. But, uh, you know, we get an alternate explanation for the name of Harry's that they have hair trigger minds. Uh, again, like, it's it's a little, I don't know, for some reason, it's a, a little anticlimactic. It's a little, you know, to learn that, like, the Harry's are, you know, clones grown from this uh, this lab. I mean, again, it you know, there's no reason it, it should be. But just to me, it, like, I don't know, I just, I would have preferred it if, if the Harry's were, you know, from New Genesis or something. But, um, you know, them being clones is just not, you know, it makes me less curious about them. With the new gods, it's kind of like, oh, you know... What's your family like? Who who's your mother and father? Who is your grandmother and grandfather? You know, oh, you know, was your great grandfather, you know, dark side or or uh, high father or Thor or something? You know, no, we we're grown from from a cell sample. But again, it's still it's it's very innovative. It's it's super sci-fi, really pushing things. And again, this seems to me like a progression of you know some of the ideas Jack Kirby had with the X Men, where it's like okay, we we have the X Men where they're uh, these sort of accidental mutants where, um, you know, people are exposed to radiation and then they give birth to a mutant who has, who, who, you know, fortunately has a superpower. This seems a little more credible that, um, we have instead these, these mutants that are sort of bred in a lab from, you know, cl from cell samples and clone tissue and, and specifically designed to have special abilities. That seems, that's interesting and a little more credible. I don't, I don't know if it's a better, um, you know, basis for a superhero mythology, but but I, I like where I like where Kirby's going. He's pushing the boundaries, and and you can see how the genetic package that he talks about in in Silver Star being like a, another wrinkle on this, another progression. Then we get a really great Jack Kirby collage. I just really like this one where Superman's showing Jimmy this like visual of you know the dna and and the nucleus of the cell and you know things being broken down and, and translated into information in these charts jimmy lies the essence of the project the secret of life long hidden in the dna molecules has been extracted and is now being used for mankind's benefit and uh it's really cool i would like it even better if it you know were a uh, kirby drawn superman face on this uh kirby drawn superman body the the body, it looks like, you know, a Kirby drawing with, with uh, Coletta inks, but that face, you know, make it like, to make it a, a pure, you know, Jack Kirby collage, but still beautiful work here. Nice bit of, uh, you know, variety. And, and just making these comics feel as cutting edge as, as they were in 1970. There is constant research going on all the time. As it expands, new problems arise. So we have the normals, the step-ups, and the aliens. So we're going to get an explanation of the DNA alien title that we had in, in at the beginning. I'll bet, look at that bottom category, aliens. Do you mean this project can actually grow non-humans? The human cell has been subjected to a wide range of conditions and has yielded some strange developments. Oh, come now. I'm just not ready to come face to face with campy, bug-eyed monsters. No, but we do have Double X. Double X? I'd sure like to meet any guy with that name. You shall. What's new, Double X? Hello, Superman. You bring another curiosity seeker, I see. Great day in the morning. Great looking design on Double X. Uh, I'm assuming, you know, this looks a lot like a creature you would see in the Outer Limits or on Star Trek or on the Twilight Zone. So I'm, I'm guessing Kirby based this on something that he saw on TV, but this is a pretty cool design. Er, pardon my outburst. I don't mean to offend, but you sure live up to your notices. Double X is resigned to being the project's conversation piece. He's seen every visiting VIP. There was one senator who called me the man from Mars. But despite my origin, I'm as native to Earth as you are, young fellow. He's named Double X because his powers are still unknown. However, he's a great researcher. So we had the X-Men over at Marvel. Now we have the Double X... DN Aliens. My name's Jimmy Olsen, and it's a great privilege to meet you. Thank you. I consider any friend of Superman as one of mine. Well, can you beat that? A resident alien. Are there any more of his kind here? None of Double X's species, but other types have been grown. Superman, do you realize what weird and perhaps dangerous channels are being probed here? I'm thinking of our hidden enemy. 
What can he be doing with the stolen human cells? Superman has good cause to worry, for at that very moment, there is increased activity beneath the cover of our alien cells, Simeon. Alien, room full of, you know, alien eggs. Vapor stimulation is doing its work, Mockery. I believe they've reached the hatching stage. There, the shell begins to crack. Triumph, a hand emerges. So we have this hand breaking out of an egg, reminiscent of the cover of an issue of Challengers of the Unknown that Kirby did. The other, now we shall see what has been kept from our scrutiny. So we have one, one arm busting out of the egg. Now we have two arms busting out of the egg. And then I like this, this twist for the final panel. Then, wait, four arms? Our alien beast has four arms? A fantastic four. Need we say more? Watch for the sequel to this exciting new development. Watch for the four-armed terror. So great cliffhanger there. Really makes me want to read the next issue like right away. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee and Jack Kirby Star Warriors, The Adventures of Adam Star and the Solar Legion. I'm also the author of Witchman, a new superhero comic, which is part of a Kickstarter campaign. To learn more, follow the link in the show notes below. I'll see you next time for New God Sunday School. Mm -hmm.